by, by 20,000 within the next five years. So it's a very ambitious goal, but it's something that if we all work together, it definitely can be accomplished. Um, the co-chairs of the National Action Alliance, while they're not here today, um, but they are the Honorable John um, McHugh, from, he's the Secretary of the Army, and also the Honorable Gordon, uh, Gordon Smith, um, who is the President and CEO of the National Association of Broadcasters. Um, and then if you want to we also, we also are joined by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and John Madigan is going to be sitting on our panel for us. Um, we also have Trevor Sons still with us, joining us today. And they are leading the uh, not-for-profit organization dedicated to preventing suicide through research, education, and advocacy. Uh, they also provided the, uh, the yummy Halloween cookies and cupcakes <laughs> and, and soda outside, so thank you for doing that. Um, we also want to just welcome other members of the mental health community, advocates, families, and attendees. And Congressman Ryan has arrived, so I'll, I will pass it off to him. We've uh, we welcomed the primary sponsors for today, sir. All right. So keep going. You're doing good. <laughs> um, at this point. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so it's actually right on cue. So at this time, we could uh, welcome uh, Congressman Tim Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I am Congressman Tim Ryan. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to be yes. I'm going to be brief. We have a, a fantastic panel uh, to learn from, and I just want to thank everybody for their participation. This is clearly a huge issue that uh, many many Americans are talking about, and I think one that, unfortunately, as I've said before, you know, if you if you get killed in action, you know, you're on the front page of the newspaper. There's a, a parade and there's stories about you and your family and who's left behind and all of that, and that's all very appropriate. Uh, I just feel sometimes that if you make it back and six months, a year, or two years later, you take your own life in the obituary section, there's no um, pomp and circumstance, there's no ritual, there's no way of um, really honoring the service. Um, and I think the best thing we can do is, is try to prevent that from happening. And I think we have a great panel here today to, dis to discuss that. And I really believe, um, pretty common, you know, I just really believe that the country, we're in a real funk right now in the country. And I think part of it is that in little communities all over, families all over our country are hearing these stories. And I said, it's not a front page. It's hard for us to actually know why, but we just know something's wrong. And uh, I think we have an obligation as legislators and leaders to try to explore every avenue, every opportunity to go and not just wait for them to come to us, but to have outreach and go find these men and women. So very thankful for, for this fantastic panel. I know you have a million different things to do, but we've got a great crowd. And, um, so on behalf of Grace and myself, And uh, now our first panelist is um, Dr. David Litz from the Action Alliance, um, and then he will be provided overview of how members and staff can join the Action Alliance efforts to promote messages of hope, connectedness, social support, resilience, treatment, and recovery. Thank you, Congressman, uh, Mane, and Scott, and everyone that's been involved in putting this together. Um, so we're from the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention. 165 organizations coming together under an umbrella uh, to work on some of the issues that are uh, facing us as a nation as we look at trying to prevent, prevent suicide across the nation. Um, we do have uh, several uh, veterans of uh, Congress that are on the National Action Alliance. Both of our co-chairs uh, have served here on the Hill. Um, and. Uh, Byron Jordan is a member of the executive committee, as is uh, representative of all time. As we began looking at some of the uh, national uh, issues confronting us in our suicide prevention uh, effort, we realized that there are narratives going on in this country that we're working against. Uh, and one of those has to do with military and veteran suicide. If you just to the media, you would think that either a majority or a large minority of all veterans and military people are killing themselves. 
And the fact is the vast majority of military veterans and active duty military are very resilient, they're skilled people, um, they're, they're reaching out for support when they need it, um, they're thriving. And so if you're a person, uh, a military member or a veteran, and you're really at a tough spot in your life, and you have this impression that many or most of your peers in that situation are killing themselves, that just lowers the threshold for you doing it. So what we want to do here today is work with all of you to help us change this conversation because members of Congress have a role in making, giving people in this country a more accurate uh, uh, picture of what's really going on and, and how these veterans uh, and military members are really surviving and they're very, very resilient. So, uh, you know, we're coming up on Veterans Day here and that will provide opportunities for those of you who are staff to, to create messages. It will, it will provide uh, opportunities for members to speak out about veterans' uh, resiliency and, uh, and, and, and even the role of treatment and recovery for those who are suffering from the invisible wounds of war. And so today we want to give you the kinds of equipment and, and resources to help you get those messages out and change that narrative and, and really save some lives. I think you know we're trying to empower you to help us save the 20,000 lives that we want to save in the next 20 years. So think about the channels that you have available to you. And as you're creating messages, making sure make sure that you're focusing on help seeking, giving people uh, specific information about the things that they can do uh, to help prevent suicides and to help others know where to turn for help. Um, one of the barriers that we have, and this is the language that we use, and I want to draw your attention to one of the resources that you have somewhere in your packet there. It's, it's this thing that has team up at the bottom. And it says, a style guide for reporting on mental health. If you can just find that in your materials and pull it out for a minute. This was developed by one of our member organizations, the Entertainment Industry Council, in collaboration with several others here. And it's just kind of a, you know, a two-page guide to talking about mental health issues in a way that's going to be helpful and not harmful. And, and although it's designed for journalists, there's a lot in here that you can use. I want to draw your attention to just a couple things there. First of all, in the left-hand column, about halfway down, you see crazy, psycho, nuts, lunatic, deranged. Those are all words that when they're used publicly, they just increase people's stigma. And if there are people with mental illness, they see those words and it just makes them kind of crawl in a hole. And we don't want that. We want those people to come out and to get treatment and to recover and to do well in life. So when you see that kind of language, you know, first of all, don't use it. But when you see it, you want to correct it. And I should point out that at the end of this um, session today, we're going to do some role playing and give you a chance to turn some of those messages around. So look for some of those things and figure out how you're going to turn it around to say, you know, people with mental illness uh, instead of some of these other very derogatory terms. Crime and violence, the next item down. Keep in mind that the vast majority of crimes in this country are people are committed by people who are not mentally ill. And the vast majority of people with mental illness do not commit crimes or violence. So, you know, we have misperceptions about that in this country. Um, over on the right-hand side, we talk about labeling. Um, we don't call a person with heart disease a heart, a heart disease, right? We call them a person with heart disease. The same way with mental illness. We don't call a person with schizophrenia a schizophrenic. They're a person, a human being, that has a diagnosis of schizophrenia. So we always want to use, encourage you to use, person-oriented um, language. Um, let's flip over to the back side. Um, recovery and treatment on the left hand column about halfway down. Whenever you get a chance, emphasize that these things are treatable and that people can recover and go on and live successful lives. And veterans do that by the millions. Um, and then I want to uh, flip over to uh, suicide on the right hand column there. There's a lot of language that we have tended to use around suicide that's not helpful at all. For instance, we say um, sometimes a successful suicide. Suicide. Well, a suicide is never a success. Actually, a suicide is a failure of society. It's a failure of an individual, individual to find a way to live. Likewise, a failed attempt. You know, is we just don't like that language. I mean, thank God someone didn't die when they attempted suicide. Um, it's not a failure. It's an opportunity to get someone to help and to help them find a way to live. We also sometimes uh, talk about committed suicide, um, and you know this commit 
uh, verb, the suicide, comes back from a century ago when suicide was uh, illegal in most states and in most countries. It's also regarded as a sin in many religions. Well, that language doesn't help us understand suicide at all. So I say, get rid of it. When someone talks about suicide, let's talk about died by suicide, took his or, own, uh, his or her own life. It's just some of those kind of um, nuanced things. Don't oversimplify. Likewise, I'm in the right-hand column. Suicide is never the result of just one thing that went wrong. It's almost always a, a dozen things that went wrong at the same time for someone and they just couldn't find a way through the pain. So just be cautious about oversimplifying, uh, explaining suicide. Likewise, even with veterans. Um, it's not just simple, oh, they went to combat, they came back um, and killed themselves. It's never that easy. Um, and so uh, be cautious of, of simplifying things. A lot of other things on the sheet you can use uh, as a resource, so um, we provide that for, for you. We do know that stories of uh, overcoming adversity, <coughs> when people, when a population, group of people, hears stories of overcoming adversity that actually lowers the suicide rate in that population. So as much as possible, when you can bring forth stories of veterans or military members who are overcoming adversity and finding support, finding treatment, um, never miss that opportunity. So again, in your messaging, talk about what things that can be done for help, and we're going to, we're going to feature several um, sources here of support. And um, as we go through this, and, and there are some materials and your resources as well. <coughs> And uh, I want to just draw your attention to one other resource. That, this is a fabulous, uh, maketheconnection.net is a fabulous resource um, put out by the VA where veterans can go and find other veterans like them from either the same service or the same um, service era. So you can find the Vietnam veterans from the Air Force and hear them uh, on video talk about how they overcame various different kinds of adversity and went on to find uh, successful, fulfilling lives. So when you're talking with a veteran um, who is struggling, I can encourage them to check out this website, find someone else like themselves and see what they did to overcome. Uh, this is a perfect example of a very positive message. Um, this was the Suicide Prevention Month message that came out of the uh, Department of Defense this year. It was where in previous years they would have talked about how many people are dying and and talked about all these great statistics. This year, Secretary Hagel came out with positive messaging about what the military is doing to prevent suicide. And so this is the kind of messaging that we would like to see come out of our, our leaders here from the Hill, and you all are in a position to help make that happen. So at this point, um, I want to, can I just transition? Uh, 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 so, I just, so just, for the first example, I want to introduce a couple of folks uh, here to talk about um, a, a veteran uh, and an employer, talk about how that support kind of comes together. And so um, Don Osterberg from Schneider National, um, if you'd like to just hand it over to you. Sure, great. Thank you, David. Uh, my name is Don, uh, Don Osterberg, Army uh, retired colonel. I'm currently serving as senior vice president for Schneider National. For those of you that don't, Schneider, don't know Schneider National, we're a global transportation and logistics company. Headquartered in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, we operate about 14,000 trucks across North America, which means it's one of the largest for hire carriers in North America. We employ uh, nearly 20,000 people worldwide. Uh, we have a very rich history of supporting the military and military veterans. In fact, our founder, Al Schneider, back in 1935, uh, it's a great uh, American entrepreneurial story. He sold his family car and bought a truck. Uh, we were a one truck trucking company. Mr. Schneider is now a longtime member of the Wisconsin National Guard. So as he grew the company, he naturally went to the people with whom he served in the National Guard. And many of our employees, even back from day one, uh, were military <coughs> veterans, uh, mostly from the Wisconsin National Guard. Since uh, in those intervening 78 years, uh, we have valued military veterans, Guard and Reservists, into our forces. If you think about that, uh, military veterans are dedicated, goal-oriented team players, disciplined, self-motivated, physically fit, with a strong work ethic. 
we can build a workforce around that. Uh, just this year, uh, data point to 21 percent of the over the road drivers that we hired this year are military veterans. Uh, we've gotten recognized that we're actively involved in the military apprentice program, U.S. Army Partnership for Youth Success, U.S. Army Wounded Warrior Program, U.S. Army Reserve Employer Partnership, Hire Heroes, Joining Forces, Vet, uh, Vet Biz Program. And of all of the recognitions that we've gotten over the years uh, from for our military support, uh, I think perhaps most notable in 1991, uh, Schneider National was recognized by the Enlisted Association of the National Guard of the United States uh, as the most supportive employer of the Guard and Reserve. And since that was the very first award that they gave out, uh, that award, even today, is now referred to as the Al Schneider Memorial Award. So we had long valued military veterans, the capabilities that they bring. And rather than listen to me talk about that, uh, I brought with me today, I think, an example of what I described in terms of the desirability. Uh, First Sergeant John Williams uh, came to us as an older road truck driver, was quickly promoted to become a training engineer, which is an older road instructor for us, became an operations support representative, a senior operations support representative, and has been promoted uh, to an instructor position in our operating center in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, still an active uh, National Guard from the Pennsylvania National Guard. And I'm going to let him talk about his experience and really what to having a Military friendly employer on Schneider National. So, with that, thank you, Doc. Um, yeah, like Don was saying, my name is John Williams. I, I'm first sergeant with um, the 56th Record Brigade in Pennsylvania. Since 2004, I, I was on two stints with the National Guard. I was in, in the Massachusetts Army National Guard when I first came to Schneider. Um, since then, I have Schneider's bent over backwards to make sure that all the employees make their, their, week, their weekend drills, their annual trainings, and anything else like NCO academies, disasters. Uh, while in Massachusetts in 1993, the lizard, I was actually home on my weekend off from Schneider and uh, was activated for a week for the, for the blizzard. And just, just a phone call to my manager. Is it a problem? Take care of the state. See you in a week. The tall ships that came in 1993, we were activated for that as well. And then through my process of promotions, Schneider National moved my, me and my family from Massachusetts down to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, like Don was saying, as an operations support representative. At that time, I got out with Army National Guard and had no aspirations of getting back in until uh, one day when I was waiting to get my new class of students. We were watching TV and we were watching the the two planes going to the World Trade Center. And uh, at that point, I decided that it was for me to get back into the military. So in uh, 2003, I listed into the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. 2004, once I graduated from my uh, my, my schooling to be a forward observer, I uh, volunteered to deploy to Iraq. And I left one month later. Through that whole time, since 2004, I've been on active duty to deployments to Iraq for six of the last nine years. I've, contact, I've been in contact with Schneider National. They've been great where they've kept my job. So I came off of active duty my last time, just May of this year, and I came right back into my instructing role. It was a getting back on a horse. Didn't miss a beat. Uh, they've, you know, they've been great through the whole process. Um, in contact with uh, corporate itself, I would send in my, my, my LESs, my pay statements with the military, and as an E8, they would still met, they would still pay me the difference between what my base pay as a soldier was and what I was previously making with Schneider. So didn't miss, you know, it was an added, added benefit that they didn't have to do. I mean, they have to keep my job, but they don't have to uh, pay me that extra money. And during that time, my wife used my post-911 GI Bill, and she just graduated from nursing school and ended up able to pay for that. So I can go on and on and on, grind my head off. But Schneider's been real good for me. So um, I, I think that that definitely deserves a round of applause. <laughs>
Um, our next panelist, um, we have uh, Ms. Sandra Mason. She's the acting director for Recovery Care Coordination at the Department of Defense. And she will provide an overview of the National Resource Directory and how the National Resource Directory can be used as, um, as a resource for your offices and as well um, to helping service members, veterans, and their Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'll try not to talk like a little bit. Um, the uh, site that I'm going to talk to you about is called NRD.gov. And you should have one of these cards and your seed or your packet of information. The online directory was launched in the fall of 2008 as a result of NDAA 2008, wanting us to establish a uh, resource. Uh, center of resources for recovering service members, families, veterans, and caregivers. And the Department of Veterans Affairs, Department of Labor, and the Department of Defense came together and created this website. We have over 14,000 resources that are available to uh, service members and their families, caregivers, and uh, those who are working with service members and their families and their communities. You can actually go to this website, this online directory, and research resources in your communities, in your state, in your region. You can use keyword searches. For example, you could use the keyword of suicide in, for example, Florida, and put that into the directory and come up with all the particular resources within your area for someone. Um, the directory is, is user-friendly. I can use it. I think anybody can use it if I can use it. Um, it's user friendly. You don't have to have a password or a login to use it. You do not have to worry about anyone researching who's looking at the directory and who's using it. A lot of folks like to use things anonymously these days, and you can certainly use this directory that way. The website provides a central location for all those resources. Uh, Department of Defense manages the content. We go in on a daily basis and we do every service there, every resource there. Uh, eight hours, sometimes 12 hours a day, looking at resources, making sure that the links work, that the resources are valid resources. All of the resources have been vetted through our office. Um, and then the Department of Labor and VA work with us behind the scenes to make sure that the site is always functional and useful for our service members. The resource directory will allow for you to have a widget. Um, within your own websites, and we encourage that because it offers your constituents an opportunity to go directly to your website and see that there's something available to them within their communities, and they get access to that region. The, it's been, since July of 2013 this year, we've increased uh, our traffic to that site. It's taken a minute, but we've managed to get the information out and the word out. We've increased by 33%. We expect to have over a million um, approaching the uh, a million unique visits this year by December, and we're on track to surpass three million page visits, uh, page views this year. We research every every resource, as I said earlier. We research them every day. We go in and we'll add resources as we go on. There's 14,075, right now, 750 there. And so any organization is welcome to add their resource to us and we look by state, by county, and by community. So I would encourage each of you to take an opportunity to go into NRD.gov and look at it, play around with it, look in your particular states if you find that there's something unique there. I think there are, uh, there's a space there on NRD where you can actually you know, provide input if you so choose to do so. Okay? Very quick. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and our next panelist, and again, just kind of going off of this, um, these are really useful tools because as staff, I know we want to know what are the resources, what are the numbers that we can share. And because this is a government um, funded program, we can share those on the, onto the, your website. You can put them on the bottom of your. your tag link um, when you send emails. So those are some things that we do within our office to kind of get at that resource as well. Um, our next panelist is Dr. Dan Hunt, and she will, uh, she's with the Military Veterans Crisis Hotline number. Um, how many of you knew that there was a crisis hotline, a national crisis hotline? 
and also with the National Crisis Hotline, um, they've really made it a one-stop shop um, with the hotline, which is 1-800-273-TALK-8255. And with that number, it has a prompt that will um, also include it for, to assist veterans or their families. So um, it's kind of really easy. It's one number that you can use. Again, you can share that with your constituents and put it on your website as well. Um, so Dr. Jen Kemp is um, with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, and she will provide an overview of the military and veterans crisis hotline and how you can use it as a and I'm so impressed. She just rattled that number off. <laughs> the goal would be that you would all be able to do that when you walked out of the room. You know, the, the Veterans um, Crisis Line is truly, I think, um, a, a pretty good model of how things should actually come into being and operate. Um, it's one of those, uh, now we hope it's some kind of an institution that, that's there to stay, um, that was initially um, a part of legislation. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Joshua Ankit bill, which is a very important piece of legislation that came through, at least in my life, um, in 2008. Um, the legislation was driven by um, a mother of a young soldier who returned from Iraq um, and uh, killed himself. And she uh, really worked with her local um, Congress people to develop this legislation. It was one of those perfect pieces that um, the VA had a lot of input into. We worked together to make sure we got what we we wanted um, to support our efforts and the community worked to see that they got what they needed to support their efforts. And as a result of that, the suicide prevention program and the VA reform, which is really exciting and, and really how it should work. One of the pieces of that legislation was that we would provide crisis intervention services for veterans um, who needed them. And we had some decisions to make about that, about whether we should do it ourselves, whether we should arrange for other people to do it. And we decided that um, we really wanted it to be veteran and military specific, that we wanted people who called the number to get that sort of special attention to their needs. But we recognized that we couldn't do it alone. So we partnered with the Department of Health and Human Services um, in SAMHSA to use the National Suicide um, Prevention Number so that everyone would have the same number to call across the country and an option of pushing one if you were affiliated um, with the military in any way or a veteran. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty remarkable. Um, sometime, um, Towards the end of this week, beginning of next week, we'll hit um, our million call into um, the crisis line. Um, and that represents um, really a million people who, for some reason or another, um, call for help or information. Something inside them said, um, you know, I'm going to give it one more chance. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to find out how to get help for. Um, myself or how to get help for my loved one, um, and it's, uh, it's truly, I think, um, never going to um, save everyone's life, but it's certainly, if we can get them to make that call, um, it's going to make a difference, um, and I think we've seen that over and over again. You know, we really we don't know a lot about military suicide and veteran suicide, um, other than the fact that it's a tragedy and we're doing our best to, to prevent it. Um, we don't know a lot about the risk factors that um, uh, play a part in that. We think we get a handle on something and then the data comes through and proves that, that perhaps we're wrong or we're not thinking about it right. It's been kind of a continual effort on both the VA and the DOD's part to to really come to some, some kernels of truth in this area. But we do know a few things, um, and really it's very uh, positive and hopeful. Um, we know that if you give people an opportunity to seek help, they'll do it. And the other thing that we know is that treatment makes a difference, that actually treatment helps. Um, and treatment for um, the issues that are underlying the problem. So if we can get people to make that phone call, to get engaged in treatment in some way, and it doesn't need to be a traditional sit down and talk to your therapist uh, sort of option, 
some, we have online programs, we have all sorts of other options now that appear to be making um, a difference also. There's a lot of hope. And that's the message that we need to get out there, that this is uh, certainly um, an exciting time and opportunity um, to, to make a difference for a number of people. So we have a, um, a, a, this is our newest PSA. Um, the the Talking to them learns about the real issues they're dealing with can be awkward and uncomfortable. We think to ourselves, I never served. How can I understand? We'll talk about it when they're ready. And then we'll wonder why they don't want to talk. But when their behavior changes, when they withdraw themselves, increase substance use, or even talk about hurting themselves, it's time to act. Because if we don't, our families and relationships will suffer. Ask the hard questions. Listen to the veterans in your life and show you care. Make the call. It matters. When you recognize a veteran is in crisis, Call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. So I think um, you've got a, a, a folder full of information. Um, inside there are some um, propaganda tools that uh, <coughs> you certainly can use. We have a little um, flip card. Um, that you can certainly keep available uh, on your desk or um, handy so that uh, you have the number in front of you. Um, and it's good to see if you just kind of glance at and read at the back um, once in a while. Um, it's kind of good to see if you can read the full part of your mind. Um, you'll notice that uh, it's double branded as the Veterans Crisis Sign and the Military Crisis Sign. Um, we're kind of all in this together. The calls come to the same place. Um, the referrals are made out to the appropriate um, people. And then the other thing to remember is that it's completely anonymous. Um, we never uh, demand anyone's information or um, even seek it out unless there's an immediate crisis um, at hand and we have to do that. There's a, um, a website, www.veteranscrisisline.net. Um, um, it's purposely not built on a, on a back off website. So that people maybe feel more comfortable in using it. I mean, and through the website is an um, access to our chat features, so people can get in, and it's more like instant messaging than it is really chatting. But it's a one-to-one -one -one discussion with the crisis line responder. Um, and our, our youngest veterans um, actually use that chat feature um, a lot. Uh, we uh, opened up a texting service. Um, uh, that is uh, slowly overtaking um, our lives. The number of people who get in and text, but it's a great opportunity. But also because they're texting from their phone, um, we do have the opportunity to, to call them and reach out to them if, if they're in trouble. So that's a great opportunity for everybody. Um, also on the website is a self-assessment quiz um, that uh, people are taking by the thousands. I think it's a difficult thing to do to get into a, a website and say, I'm thinking of killing myself or I think I might be in trouble. But a lot of people will take this quiz and then they'll get into the chat room and say, you know, I took this self-assessment and it told me I needed to talk to you. So so here I am. It's kind of a conversation started. So steer people in that direction um, also. Um, and I think I'm just going to end with um, well, you, I mean, you just can't go wrong, go wrong. You know, I've really never heard of anyone being offended or upset if somebody said to them, um, well, you know, if you ever need some help, I've got a great number that you can call. Um, or um, anyone who really uh, shows that they care enough to really ask the question and say, well, you know, I know other people that, um, that, are, that are having trouble and they found this number helpful, can I give it to you? I think um, it's, a, it's a sign of, um, of reaching out and caring. And, and hope that things will get better. Um,
Thank you, Dr. Uh, and also from a staff perspective, with the National Crisis Hotline number, we highly recommend that as staff, you can call the crisis hotline number from your from your desk. And if you let the operator, the person that answers the phone, just let them know it's not a crisis. You just want to know how the hotline works. It's very helpful for you, so that way, as you're providing this resource to your constituents or to other veterans, um, you just if you ask them, I, I'm just calling. It's not a crisis. I just want to see how the hotline works. Um, and then you can do that. It's very helpful. We also um, encourage individuals to put the hotline number into their cell phone because in time of crisis, sometimes they, people don't know um, who to call or they forget. So it's, it's um, easily accessible to have it in your phone. Um, and another thing, too, is anytime we're going to do a, a high publicized mental health event, for example, my boss did a mental health Twitter chat with SAMHSA. Um, because we knew, we didn't know who was going to be on this Twitter ch uh, chat nationwide. So what we did is we actually called the National Crisis Hotline number to alert them that we were going to be doing a highly publicized mental health event. So that way they were able to kind of up, up, up on some of their, um, to prepare some of their operators to answer any call that were coming. So from a staffing perspective, this number is very helpful. Um, I don't know, have any of your offices ever gotten a crisis call to your office? Mm -hmm. um, in, in our office, we actually did have a veteran call in, um, and he was in crisis and had mentioned um, suicide. And so another thing that you can do is you can do a three-way chat with the National Crisis Hotline number. So maybe you're not fully, um, you don't have a background in mental health or whatnot, but you can dial the crisis hotline number and an operator will get on and, and kind of walk them through that process. So that way you don't have to kind of deal with um, not knowing where to go and then hanging up and not knowing. So this is a great, a great um, tool. So thank you all for, for this number. I definitely have saved so, so many and, and obviously if you call the Crisis Society and you say, I'm from the kind of person so-and-so's office, you get a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to do that. Um, oh, and also we encourage you to have your bosses memorize this. Um, if your boss puts out a mental health press release or anything that deals with mental health, if they're on C-SPAN, um, if they're on television or radio, we always ask that if your boss is talking about mental health or suicide, that you include this hotline number onto your press release or on the bottom of the screen. We try to do that because you don't want your bosses to go out and talk about this serious subject and then not provide a direct resource for people to do. So um, this is just some tips from our office that we do. Um, our next panelist is um, um, John Madigan from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And um, he's going to be really focusing on um, the overview and collaborative efforts of social media um, and how to use mental health within um, media, what are the appropriate things to say and not say it. So, John, I'm going to show up here for the next five years now. Um, I think when David and Colleen and I started to establish a part of this program back in July, we really didn't begin a meeting where we talk about um, the positive change and the hope that's out there. And that despite some of the bad numbers that we see, I lost my sister 15 years ago uh, after she lost her own battle with bipolar illness. So my family knows all too well you know, what's going on and like that. People really want to thank Don and John for their service. And Jan, for what she does um, at the VA is absolutely uh, critical. The uh, uh, National Action Alliance, um, David's the executive secretary, and talked about Governor Senator Gordon Smith, who lost his son, Gordon Lee Smith, who's named for the federal program for college of Native Americans. They've done some tremendous work <coughs> over the last couple of years, and now we're trying to help them really roll this out. So if you go to their website, they have some incredible resources and, and some incredible policy ideas um, that we want to talk about. And what I want to talk about today for a few minutes. Uh, back in September, you may have realized that the first week of September was uh, National Suicide Prevention Week. And the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention got many members of Congress to do uh, these 30 second, 60 second social media things. And then they, they sent them out on their um, social media. So, why don't we want to show the group, um, Grace and Paul Hamill and uh, Senator Joe Donald in the room, what they do. I'm Candice Molina Politano, and I strongly support suicide prevention. 
No one should ever feel ashamed, embarrassed, or afraid to ask for help. Help has reduced mental health stigma. If you or someone you know needs help, please contact National Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. Today, your life matters. Hello, I'm United States Senator Joe Donnelly of Indiana, and I want to help end the tragedy of suicide. I'm working to help service members and veterans realize that their mental health is just as important as their physical health. Acknowledging the challenges you face are not a sign of weakness. Seeking help is a sign of strength. So here's what we're asking you all to do. What we'd like to do is not just your bosses, um, but yourself. Yourselves involved, we could be the same kind of thing. We're going to reach out to the DSOs, the Veterans Service Organization, and other suicide prevention groups next week, and it's going to be a joint collaboration again between the Action Alliance and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And we recommend a short 30 to 60 second video, much like you saw at the race where some of the done in the um, You know, again, we'll provide your script, but it could be as simple as hi, I'm John Madigan. I lost my sister Nancy to suicide, and on this Veterans Day, I want to send a message to all of our brave men and women who may be struggling with depression or PTSD. You are not alone. The help is available. Use the hotline number and press 1 or visit veteranscrisisline.net to receive confidential support from the process. It's a real simple thing. Trevor, again, raise your hand in the back there. Um, He's then going to compile them. You know, once you send it out on your social network, send us a copy of it, and we're going to compile it um, at our New York headquarters in uh, New York and the David, and we'll figure out something for their website too, again, with the veteran service organizations. And again, this is just getting the conversation going. You know, much like Scott's boss, um, Tim Ryan, getting the conversation going about addiction and substance abuse. It's, it's a normalized conversation. As David said earlier, if you were suffering with heart disease, no one wouldn't say go get your heart fixed. But if you're suffering with diabetes, no one wouldn't say get your diabetes fixed. But again, the term behavioral health is sometimes stigmatizing. So we want people um, to get out there and um, do something to help us. So how many of you might be interested in personally getting your boss or do something like this yourself next week once we get the instructions? All right, I'll see a little bit. I want to see all the hands in the room go on, and I want to see what we can do. The other thing before I finish, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Trevor asked me to say, once completed, we hope that you'll help promote the video by social media and use the hashtag um, Veterans Day. The other thing that I wanted to let you know about, is you put on your chair, this is our new um, military family suicide prevention brochure. And you are getting an advanced copy. It's going to go out to all the offices next week. And a couple of important things to help your boss, help them understand the risk factors, the warning signs, and the immediate protective actions that you all laid out here. And most importantly, in one place of all of the resources for military and veteran health um, across the country. And then I also want to say, again, Sandra, I found this out a couple weeks ago. I went to a uh, open house at the DOD Suicide Prevention Office. And I've been involved in this for four years now. And uh, Jan, I was telling Sandra earlier, when I first met Jan 10, four years ago, she was telling me to tell her until we saw people not having jobs, until we saw people not having access to medical care, until we do a whole bunch of things that Sandra's group does, we're not going to really solve the suicide problem. So I urge you to get involved. It is a hopeful message. There are lots of good things going on within the Action Alliance, within the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Ame received our first uh, Congressional Staff Award this past June. Scott may be in line to receive an award from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> all of no, seriously, I worked on the Hill 35 years ago. All of you serve really important frontline roles. So let your constituents know, let your bosses know what kinds of resources are here, and we can get people help. Thank you very much. I mentioned at the, at the outset that um, the Action Alliance is 165 organizations coming together 
and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which is one of the leading organizations, and it's uh, great to have them uh, in the actual line and, and you know, pull them together with us in every way possible. Um, so now we can enter the fun part of this, where you all get involved. This is the audience participation part, right? We're going to do a little role playing, and we have prizes uh, to Florida <laughs> and Mexico. Right? That's right, that's right. And your office is providing it, right? That's absolutely. <laughs> Very good. So first of all, I'm going to put up um, just up, we have a couple slides with some messaging on it. And we'll just kind of, first of all, just pick that apart. You know, tell us what's wrong with it, and then help us reframe. Okay? Are you ready? So get your, get your fingers on the buzzer. Okay. The veteran suicide epidemic is getting worse. A veteran commits suicide every 80 seconds. What's wrong with the message? Okay. Negative. Negative. <clears throat> About death. Does it give you the perception about uh, perception of how common this is? Maybe it's more common than it really is. Um, there truly is not an epidemic. Um, truly, the numbers have not changed drastically um, over the past 10 to 12 years. Um, I think the, uh, the epidemic part of it is that we're paying attention um, and we're actually looking at. And for the first time, we actually have a good idea of how many veterans do die by suicide. So the numbers are too high, by, by all means, and it's a tragedy when any veteran dies by suicide. But um, the epidemic is So how would you reframe this? Give me some, you know, some counterpoints that you'd rather see. Other ideas. What would you like to replace this method with? Uh, so, the vast majority of veterans what? Are getting help. They're actually or they're doing well. Vast majority are doing great. There are companies helping veterans or in the community. Those kinds of messages. So you guys can help get those messages, those kinds of messages out. Let's look at one more. These service members are coming back from combat, going crazy and shooting themselves. What's wrong with the message? Specifically, it's normalizing the behavior. Does it, it sound like it's normal? It kind of puts, puts the behavior, puts the uh, veterans down, sort of, by yeah. saying they're going crazy. Using that type of language. Going crazy language, yes. Some of them have depression, some of them have PTSD, some of them have TBI. That, that's not going to. They're not going crazy, right? Right, it's not going to want them. I want to get them to seek help. There you go. How about they, we talked about oversimplifying explanations for suicide? See you how know, this is kind of implying. And actually, deployment's not a risk factor either for the veteran population or the military population. The majority of military suicides are by people who know that they're not. More and more veterans are coming back seeking help for them. So, we are reframe it? Yeah. What else would you like to see there instead of that? You get the idea, at least, right? You want to stay away from this kind of stuff, more positive messaging. Now, for the last little role play, I need some people with a lot of kind of puts put and they're willing to put it out there. Um, Ani asked that we drag some folks in the room. We want to stay. Um, this is a reporter calling a congressman who has some questions about veteran suicide. And so I've got a little script here. And who, who's like willing to, to put it out there? Who's, who's going to take a risk here? Do you want to be the reporter or do you want to be the congressperson? Oh, that is the president. Okay, so you're going to be the congressperson? Okay. Now, we want somebody to, to be the reporter. Now, the reporter's got the easy part because you can just read the script. Who wants to be the reporter? Yeah. Who wants to be a reporter? Somebody wants to take this, and the questions are right here. All you have to do is read the question. This is easy. First of all, your name is? 
So, Morgan, if you just read these, these some questions here, and you kind of see, here's some ideas that a member of Congress could use if we were to get with the script that we're not going to. Okay? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, here are your questions. There's another question there. There's another question there. Um, so, take it away. Congresswoman, in honor of Veterans Day, I would like to talk to you about the ongoing suicide epidemic among our service members and veterans. Well, it's not actually an epidemic. If you read the newspaper, me, it seems like veterans are coming back home from combat delaying and committing suicide. Do you really believe these deaths are going to help? Well, I'm not sure what Summerfield at afsp.org, and I'll be happy to talk about money all day long. 
and, and I would just like to say that the staff of the Action Alliance is supported by a grant from SAMHSA, so likewise, uh, I'm here on SAMHSA's dollar, so I'm, I can't uh, ask you for anything. Uh, but I will just put out a fact that as the 10th leading cause of death, um, suicide is uh, dramatically underfunded uh, in terms of research uh, to try to get it at the root causes and, and uh, you know, compared to other public health problems that kill about the same number of people. Um, suicide gets just a fraction of that level of funding. Yeah, unfortunately, so right now, at, at NIMH, National Institute on Mental Health, only $40 million is being marked for direct research on suicide prevention. So I was involved in the cancer prevention movement in the 80s, and I think we're sort of where we were then. We are now with the suicide prevention movement, and we don't want to spend 40 years. So again, we realize there are tight dollars on the hill, and we have to look at creative ways to um, get uh, a bigger bang out of the buck and try to you know, work with groups inside and outside government. Again, I think the Action Alliance, by virtue of their membership, you know, with about 200 groups across the country, there are lots of things going on. I think the NRD is one reason to reinvent the wheel. So take a look at this, which is why we're so excited to see that. So again, I think this is the beginning date, hopefully, of us having new conversations regularly with all of you to really figure out what's going on out there and uh, you know, where the big holes are and then where groups like ours can step in and uh, help out. One of the other things you remember about suicide and specifically is that veterans who don't have suicide look just like Americans who don't have suicide. Uh, they live in the same areas, they live in the same age groups, they live in the same gender, and they live in the same ethnic uh, background. And so when you look at risk factors across the board, and you look at really what veterans who die look like, they look a lot the same. So the good news, I think, in the back of that story is that whatever we do to help veterans, whatever research we can support, and whatever we find out, um, is really transferable to the rest of America. And the other way around. But this isn't specifically a military problem or a veteran problem, it's an American problem. And so um, we truly are in this together. I <clears> have <throat> a question for uh, Terry Williams. Um, what would it look like for you as an employed member? Coming back from your second or third point in the last half of the you didn't know if Schneider had your job ready for you to come back. What would have been like if you didn't have that? I wouldn't want to think about it. Um, like I said, my wife used my post 9 11 beyond bill. She was employed with the uh, Dunham Monty Clinic at the Work College, and um, she she left that to pursue her RM degree. So just going down to one you know, line was hard enough and it was it was nice to have the extra money that Schneider was, was giving me. But um I couldn't even think I couldn't even think about it. I mean especially like a guy. A guy his his his, his pride is in, in supporting for his family. To come home and not have that. Do some words. Express Any other questions? I just one, one thing I would say is I know on the epidemic comment up there, there's a tendency to want to, um, if you say no, there's not an epidemic, somehow you're doing a disservice to those who have died by suicide. And so maybe there's an opportunity not to, to attack that issue, but to move and shift and pivot from it and say, you know, really the tragedy is the men and women that are out there today that are suffering, that are in pain, that aren't taking advantage of an unprecedented level of resources out there for them. And so I don't think it has to be a yes or no on that issue. In some ways, you're never going to win that. So move the conversation quickly from that to what can we do now? What we can, who's out there today that we can help? How can we get a message of hope and resilience out there and connect them to resources? So I think there are a lot of opportunities where you don't have to put your boss in a position where they're on record saying there is no epidemic, people, you know, Put them in a position where they can be advocating to help the people who are here today, who served their country, who fought, who come back and earn these resources. And you know, that's I think a real opportunity to sort of shift that conversation back to the positive narrative without having to take on this other issue, which is right for you know bad, bad sound bites. Right. Tell me about the 
Congressman Ryan does that really well when he talks about the tragedy of any one person's death. So if we don't have any more questions, um, do, do any of the panelists have any last words of wisdom for staff? <laughs> Can I just put a plug in? Uh, it turns out this coming Sunday, uh, in the Brave Magazine section of the newspapers, we're going to have a whole section on suicide prevention. So we'll, we'll be reaching 63 million Americans. We had an intensive training this morning with our folks in New York um, because we expect a lot of phone calls. But then, as David and Colleen and Trevor and I try to do in today's program, we want to change the conversation and let people know there are lots of services out there. They may not be around the corner of a particular person, but we've got to help people figure out where the services are and how to get them. Is that a Washington Post insert? Yes. Or where is that? It's, it's, it's the magazine section of the Washington Post. Inside there, okay. Correct. So, so Saturday? It comes some, I get it uh, on Saturday, but it comes Sunday. So, um, Take a look it'll be it'll be in print on Sunday and online on Saturday. And I I know, um, Veterans Day uh, will be a documentary on HBO uh, that uh, features the Veterans Crisis line of the enemy responders and um, demonstrates a little bit about what it's like to be caught on the line, what kind of time offers it up, but really powerful. Um, so we uh, appreciate HBO. I like to thank uh, John. All of us are based in Washington, D.C. John Campbell, down from Pennsylvania, for the best of his own time with the support of Schneider. Uh, so thank you, John, for coming. Um, thank Congresswoman and Congresswoman uh, uh, for hosting us today. Appreciate your support. And Dave, can we have a total group again? Watch for Trevor's pitch next week, and we want to get you all involved with in these. Uh, Very definitely. Videos. Make your videos and uh, send them in, and we'll uh, that'll help us change the conversation. And uh, maybe we can we can work with you all to send out an email to work your offices. So if you sign, make sure you sign up on that contact list because uh, we'll share that with them so they can get in contact with your office. Um and. And on behalf of my boss, I apologize. She's actually in um, resources committee hearing right now. She cannot be. So she wanted to send her regards to the panelists and thank you for coming today and also to the staff because um, she always she knows how important the staff is to working on these issues for your bosses. Um, please feel free to use our office as a resource if there's more questions that you have afterwards, if your boss has something coming up that relates to mental health. Please don't hesitate to call our office, and if we don't have the answer, we will definitely um, look look for it to make sure that your boss has the appropriate resources and, and numbers. Um, and so, thank you all again for attending. So I'm going to go ahead and let staff yeah, Thanks, staff, for attending. And um, while we're making plugs, let me just make two real quick ones. Um, in addition to joining the Mental Health Caucus, Congresswoman Napolitano, if your bosses, I know some of you already are, but if your bosses aren't already a part of the Military Mental Health Caucus, <coughs> formerly known as the Military Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Caucus, please consider uh, shooting me an email at scott.hodges to join that, or have your member join that. Um, in addition, uh, hopefully this week, uh, Congressman Ryan, along with Congressman Rich Nugent from Florida, is going to be dropping a uh, Veterans and Armed Services Health Promotion Act. Uh, in regards to the question, somebody asked about legislation that's out there addressing mental health needs of veterans. Um, in, in my opinion, it's going to be a great bill to really try and find some alternative methods and get those out to veterans uh, and to our warriors and make sure that it's widely available, not just in certain key locations. So uh, check that out. It'll probably to come. And just thank you. Uh, th thanks again to the panelists. We really appreciate the, the expertise offered by a wide range between the the, the private orders and VA and DOD, it's great to have everybody here. And uh, thank, you, thank you to everybody for coming. Thank you.
Please make sure you take cupcakes and cookies. <coughs> <that I will. laughs>